Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going to be looking at Bob Wood and Bob is going to be playing his guitar in a guitar shop just because he's testing out his amp that's just been fixed. And this is one of those videos that went viral a few years ago, but we're just going to take a look at it, but then also get into another video featuring Bob after that. But let's get Bob up on screen and see how he gets on. And there we have it. So there's a few things I want to mention about this video, but just getting into Bob's playing, you can tell that he absolutely has the technique down in terms of his alternate picking and especially some of the runs that he throws together. I love the way that he changes his picking and that strumming to halfway between the chord and where you would normally strum. So he gets those harmonics kind of halfway up, but it's a really cool sound. Also the way that he slides down that fretboard was still alternate picking. And and you have to be really accurate to do that. So Bob obviously has got some ability. He's obviously been playing a hell of a long time. The problem that I've got with this video is just the stuff that's written on it. Because in my opinion, why should an older person be any less qualified to play an instrument or to do anything really if they've done it their whole life. It's almost like as soon as somebody old does something to a high standard or a high level, people go, oh wow, that was great because you're old. <laughs> it's, it's just a really weird approach because we are all the future generation of old people. It just seems a bit condescending. And I would just love to watch the video about just check out this guy who went into a shop and played guitar and he was good. You know, he's great at playing. And it just so happens that he's old. But yeah, to totally write somebody off because they're old is absolutely crazy. And it would have been great to have something on screen that after it's been said that they're shocked at how good he is and he played like an absolute legend, maybe to have a little bit of information as to why he's so good and his history of playing. I'm not asking for like a 20 minute video, but just a little nugget of information. But we'll be getting into that. Don't worry. On this video, I'm going to be covering Bob's history, the people that he's played with, and also a little bit of his life story as well. We're going to be getting into another one of his performances that was around the same time. I think this was around 2015. So now we're going to be looking at Bob just jamming out with Lindsay L here. They're going to be playing through their version of Crossroads and this is from the Bobby Bones show. So let's get these guys going and see how Bob gets on in this performance. One, two, three, four. Hey, 
Oh, so. Well, I'm going down to Rosedale, yeah. I take my rider by my side. Yeah, I'm going down to Rosedale. I take my rider by my side. You can still barrel house, baby, on the riverside. All right, Bob, I'm going to take one now. Oh, baby, play your guitar. I'm just going to jump in here because we've got a good vibe of the track and Bob's playing style, the way that he just throws in such classic lines, jazz lines in there. Really cool mix, especially for this track in particular, because you'd think that somebody would stick really to that minor pentatonic, minor blues. But it's a great mix up that Bob throws in there. I think that a lot of people are possibly taken aback by Bob's playing because of his alternate picking ability and his speed across the fretboard for his age. And all of that knowledge, all of those runs, all of that muscle memory is still going to be there. What tends to happen with older players is that the body starts to slow down. The mind doesn't. You've still got it all up here, but then getting it onto the fretboard is the difficult part, whereas Bob doesn't seem to struggle too much getting it down on the fretboard at the same speed that he would have at a younger age. But in terms of just having the appreciation of music and that appreciation of melody, but also just being able to get those lines together, you shouldn't be surprised at that at all because he's just like everybody else. And the other thing that I love about this video is that when Lindsay goes off into her solo and supplies a really cool solo herself with some great expression with that vibrato, just look at where Lindsay plays that really cool, wide, controlled vibrato at the end of her lead section. And it just makes Bob go, oh yeah, because the top players just understand expression and the technique that I always mention, it's the one that all the players, all the top players really identify with. They know exactly how important that technique is to expression. And as soon as Lindsay throws in that really cool wide vibrato, Bob just absolutely loves it. And I mean, her whole solo is great as well, but just these little elements when you get to that level and you have got someone as good as Bob listening to you, it is all about the expression. It's not about how fast you can play or how many notes you can fit into your solo or fit into a bar of the track. It's how you can make those notes feel. And as soon as you get that expression, that emotion, that's what other great players will feel. They're not analyzing your techniques. They're listening and trying to feel the way that you're playing. And you would have noticed that Bob is missing half of his little finger on that left hand. Or maybe you didn't notice because his hand moved so quickly. But that happened when he was five years of age. So he learned to play guitar with out half of that finger so it's not something that's held him back because he never knew what it was like to play with a full little finger and on his right hand he actually took off the tip of his middle finger working in his cabinet shop and then more recently he took just a bit off the tip of his third finger so his hands really have been through it. But in a little interview that I saw with Bob, he does say that a lot of people ask him how he plays so fast. And he said, well, you need short stubby fingers because <laughs> there's so much damage done to them. But it absolutely does not affect his playing one bit. But let's get back into the performance and we'll talk about Bob a little bit more at the end. Tell my friend boy Willie Brown you can run, you can run Tell my friend boy Willie Brown I am standing at the crossroads I believe I'm a-sinking down Dang. Look at Bob, go! 
Take it home, Bob. Yeah. Take it home, Bob. Yeah. I'm talking about. Woo! And there we have it. That is what music is all about. Just having a great jam over a track and just having fun and just taking a lead wherever it wants to go. And it's such a great video because it's just a great performance from an old school musician, just somebody that has absolutely spent so long getting down those fundamentals and just learning the craft. And it's interesting when this video has come up because last night I did a video on Billy Strings and Marcus King, very much the new generation of player, but they still had those old work ethics of learning to play an instrument and singing exactly as Bob is doing here at aged 81. So it's one of those things that is less common nowadays in the mainstream, but you can certainly find independent artists and artists that are signed to independent labels still paying tribute to those great players like Bob back in the day, but also Bob now, of course. And when he was only 12, he played on a live radio show. So he certainly started playing early. And I think a lot of his family, just a family full of musicians, a lot of them did play guitar, but he and his brother were the only ones that really took it to a professional level or did anything professionally with it. And he said that when he used to watch his brother play, he would wait for him to leave and then he'd pick up the guitar and just try and make his hand look like whatever his brother was doing in order to play. And he never had any lessons. He was just literally copying whatever his brother did. So he was just self-taught. And back in the day, Bob actually played with Roy Clark. He played with many, many artists, but he also shared the stage or at least did two shows with Les Paul. So he actually played after Les Paul. And it's funny because Bob said that following Les Paul at a show was like following a bulldozer with a spoon. <laughs> but we all know, I mean, that's just a, such a great line, but we all know Les Paul, who's on this channel as well, is such an amazing player himself. But in order for Bob to even share the stage with guys like that, you know that this guy has got to be able to play just to hold your own in that kind of company with Roy Clark as well. And the thing was that when Bob was playing around this time and musicians would ask him to come on the road with them, he actually had eight kids. So he felt that he had to try and support his family. And he knew, he said himself, that going on the road can be the road to starvation because there wasn't a lot of money around then. And it definitely wasn't, I guess, nowadays when people say, when you're going to get a real job instead of being a musician. Back in those days, that applied even more. You had to be very lucky to make any kind of serious money in music. And interestingly, Sam Phillips offered Bob $100,000 to move to Memphis and become a session musician for Sun Records. But this was only six months after Martin Luther King had died. And there were also protests about the Vietnam War. So Bob declined and said that it didn't seem like a safe place for him to bring up his children. And this is where we move on to why I think that Bob didn't get as much recognition or isn't as well known as he should be for his talents because he's absolutely a family man. He was just more about providing for his family however he could do that considering he had so many mouths to feed. And even now he says that he is the richest man on earth because of the family that he's got. There's no way he has said himself that he would ever trade a music career for his family. And it is evident that Bob is playing for the love of the music and the enjoyment of it. And he's not chasing anything because he's happy with where he is. So anything else is a bonus. And that really does come across when he's playing, that whole attitude, that whole approach. But it's great to look at a couple of videos of Bob. First, that viral video, which is fine, but it's good to get a bit of background on Bob the artist and the player, and also to see him lay down some lines over Crossroads here with Lindsay. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think think and if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!